All right. Welcome back guys. Welcome to the channel. My name is Anmol and today we are in conversation with I am Ashutosh Sharma. I am a software engineer here in Los Angeles. Uh been here for 6 years now and that's why I think he's interviewing me. <laughs> we'll go more in depth as the interview continues. So, let's wait for it. Uh, interesting story. Before I tell you a lot about Ashu, Ashu was a senior in my company and unfortunately he has decided to leave our company. and uh, the re- the way i met ashutosh was there's a tt table behind us and we had these sessions called tt pe charcha ah oh, it's, it's like the better version of coffee with karan you should you should watch it some subscribe, we, we, are, we can make a video on that subscribe to tt pe charcha <laughs> because uh, and then we used to have these cosmic discussions which used to start with like simple stuff and <laughs> philosophy <laughs> philosophy <laughs> <laughs> but uh coming back to the original point um so love life sometimes <laughs> <laughs> still very single um but uh so i decided since hashu uh, is leaving the company i should interview him because he's a software engineer and i'm a data scientist and i think we have a lot to learn from hashu mm-hmm. starting with the most important question first which snack will you miss the most when you leave the company <laughs> let me show you we are back in business <clears throat> Healthy. healthy choice. <laughs> healthy choice. Not healthy choice, but like with re- reduction. Yeah. Move it, Agijay. So Ashu, why did you join software engineering? Um, I had the passion for software engineering for a long time. Um, since I was in school, I loved how to write programs on computers. I like the creative aspect of it, where you can create something from scratch, and also the exposure it gets when you are. when you have like billions of people online and they are using some product and if you can make a difference in their lives it it feels amazing also the analytical part of it like you solving puzzles are like that aspect you are having a lot of challenges how to make things faster how to make things more reliable like all these things come together and they make yeah. software engineering so much fun so if i understand this correctly mm-hmm. right one was the analytical part of it where you like say puzzles and all and the right. other aspect is not only do people get to see your work but actually use it yeah and that so like the main motivation right you make exactly. something and so many people end up actually using it yeah and it, it's creative part also like you are you're building something from scratch and i mean the best part is it's all virtual everyone has access to it i mean almost everyone unfortunately but everyone has like access to it and they yeah. can use it i mean if i make a game or i make an app you yeah. can use it i can show it to my friends and yeah. show it to everyone which makes is sense. it's a lot of fun makes sense um So for those of you who don't know Ashu did his masters in CS in the US. So I wanted to ask you what did you do before doing your masters in the US? Um before that I did my bachelor's in India. Mm-hmm. Uh after that I didn't had any work experience I just came straight to USA for my masters and after that I had my job. All right. So yeah. did you have an internship in India? I did not but I had one internship in masters I worked for Google Summer of Code as oh, an internship that's cool. and the other internship was at the end of uh, my semester that like the last semester mm-hmm. and that actually converted to my full time job all right that's cool look so a lot of students have this question right should mm-hmm. they come with work experience from india and if they come without is there like some downside to it so i think you can answer it in terms of software oh uh, yeah sure so um when while i was doing my masters in uh, cslb uh, in computer science at cslb mm-hmm. um there are some students who came with experience yeah. and there were some students who came without experience yeah. i can say uh, it makes some difference mm-hmm. because if you have experience and you go for interviews the company actually takes that experience in context mm. and uh, if you perform really well you can get a very uh, good job so it mm-hmm. helps you um on the other side if you don't have experience but you are really good at what you do you can still learn here as as at your masters you can still invest learning theories you can still invest learning uh, software engineering and you can get the same type of job with the people who have experience before uh so i think it depends on your situation for me i was like if i if i go for an experience and i start working in a professional environment mm-hmm. i will not have enough motivation to go study again like become a student <laughs> again it's really tough yeah. uh, to go through exams and all those things i mean i would really love a professional job so sure. i thought maybe i should i should uh, not wait for mm-hmm. even a year just yeah. go straight yeah. and do my masters and get a job in united states straight yeah, yeah. makes sense makes sense so <laughs> one of the biggest misconceptions that people have right yeah i was one of them by the way totally guilty of it was that once you land up in the US 
Mark Zuckerberg himself will come and pick you up at the airport <laughs> with a million dollar check and be like, take my money. Take my money. Yeah. You are the next CEO of Facebook. Come <laughs> join us. Yeah. Because everyone that I was following on Instagram, at least most of my friends are either working for Google, Facebook, Microsoft. And like, oh, because that, those are the people you see in the newspaper. <laughs> like, this guy got three crore yeah. offer at Google. And, <laughs> so, yeah. what's the reality of the job search from a software dev perspective? Um, so, I would say it's it's kind of easy to find a job as a software developer, but it's not as easy if you're an international student on a visa and searching mm-hmm. for jobs. I think. Um, I don't know if and a lot of people know about it, but you have a you have a clock running when you're actually searching for jobs yeah. here in the United States. So once you are you complete your um, education, you have three mm-hmm. months to find a job. Otherwise, you have to go home. You're you're out of status. Yeah. If you're on H one B, then you have like uh, it's a gray area, but you have yeah. kind of two months to find another job and then yeah. uh, get a transfer. Yeah. So it's not that easy for us. Um, when you find a job, you get a lot of offers. Mm-hmm. Let's say you have uh, you have fifty offers from different companies. And uh, out of the out of those, like twenty five companies will just say no because you're on a visa, mm-hmm. you're not a citizen here. And then after that, the remaining twenty five companies, you just like filter them out based on like what is good, what is not good. Are mm-hmm. the companies uh, yeah. worth your time and investment? Yeah. And the remaining ten companies, you go and actually interview them, and uh, they interview you. <laughs> and at the end, you get offers, and then you take your best decision. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not like as easy as like you just go to Google or Amazon yeah. or Microsoft straight. There are so many <laughs> options, so many different country uh, companies, yeah. and there are so many variables that come into yeah, play when you're actually definitely, looking for it. Definitely. All right. So now that the misconception, or at least my misconception of finding jobs as a software developer, is out of the way, what's the best way to prepare for interviews? Like, according in my mind, especially mm-hmm. right, software dev or software engineering is a very beaten path. Right. Do your lead code, do your data structures and algorithms, apply and you'll get a job. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure like I this is like just technical, but I'm sure there are so many other parts to the interview process and the right. job process um, that we or at least I don't see or a lot of people who are in here right now and just starting their research on how to do it don't know about. So what would be your tip to that? I would say uh, the data structures and the lead code things, yeah. these are something that just get your foot in the door. Mm-hmm. So see, I mean, uh, the software companies, they can't judge you in those four hours of interview or five hours of interview. Yeah. What they have is just to test your analytical skills. Yeah. Like how good are you at understanding something? How good are you at problem solving? Mm-hmm. So uh, these things are just like a small part of the interview. Mm-hmm. They also ask, like nowadays, they also ask behavioral questions. Amazon asks interviews like... Uh, in the behavioral questions, they will ask you that. Yeah. Uh, tell me about a time when you have yeah. like uh, made optimizations to a code. Mm-hmm. How you increase performance? Mm-hmm. What happened when you had some kind of conflict with a team member or a product manager? What you do do? Mm-hmm. So all these things come with experience. You cannot learn them in a small amount of time by just like going to a website and and like learning these questions. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So uh, data structures algorithm are like a very small part. There are also system design questions yeah. where they ask you to, let's say, uh, build Instagram. Yeah, like yeah. How would you build Instagram if yeah. you were building it from scratch? Yeah. How much memory will it take in a database mm-hmm. to do those things? So, I mean, if you're a fresh graduate, it's uh, it's something that is very important. If you learn your data structures right, if you understand your data structures right, these are the building blocks and they will help you get the job. But after that, it all depends on how how fast you learn yeah. the actual computer science and not just the, the small part. The college, what they teach. What the college yeah, makes sense. Yeah. And the next question I want to ask you is like, what's the biggest misconception that people have of software engineers in general? And the second part of this question is, what's the most appealing part of working in the US as a software developer? I know I would have asked you like in comparison to India, but since you didn't like work in India, so just tell me what's your favorite part about working in the US. Hmm. Uh, I have not worked in India, but I have heard of uh, how people work in India. Yeah. And just on the basis of that, I will answer this question. Yeah, sure. I think uh, the main difference is uh, uh, the stress and the flexibility. In mm-hmm. the US, you have a lot of flexibility of where you're working from, yeah. how you're working, the time. And... Uh, it's not a lot of stress because I think uh, you you take your time. You have a good teamwork, and uh, everyone understands the work life balance. Here. Yeah, yeah. But in India, I think it's like people work a lot of uh, more than eight hours. I yeah, think it's easily goes to ten and twelve hours. Yeah. that's what I have heard from my friends. Yeah, uh, because most of the companies which are taking fresh graduates in India are consulting companies. Yeah. 
and yeah. those cons- those companies have like a very tight deadlines yeah but if sure. there are a lot of good product companies in india and if you go there and you work for them I, like there's flipkart there's yeah. ola all these companies yeah, yeah. big I tech companies that just recently emerged. exactly and there are also small startups coming up which are really good and if you work for them i think they have like really good culture yeah so i think those are the only differences all right cool and about misconception i think the biggest misconception is that uh, you just learn software engineering and you just you know as you said mark superbug will be outside and like come and get a high paying <laughs> job and that's all the life is said yeah it's not like that software engineering is like always uh, changing it's very dynamic mm-hmm. things change very rapidly and you have to keep learning it's like the constant learning job where you cannot stop at all you have yeah. to keep learning keep looking at the new technology it changes every month there's something new coming up and you have to adapt 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 yeah for sure for yeah. sure so if you're looking for a very simple thing where you just learn once in college and you just work throughout your life it's not for you yeah makes sense makes yeah. sense coming back to the million dollar question quite literally what salaries can a fresh grad <laughs> expect once they graduate from doing the masters in the US right um just just you you're going to become a millionaire once you're done i mean it's <laughs> okay uh being serious i think you can make anywhere from 0 dollars to 200000 dollars that's like almost 1 and 1/2 crore rupees right, right? yeah i'm i'm saying 0 dollars because in the worst case scenario i've seen some people just because they're out of luck or something wrong happened yeah. and they couldn't get a job here and yeah, they have to go sure. back yeah. so in that case you don't make anything but on an average if you are like average engineer and you are doing your job properly you're a hard working mm-hmm. person you can expect something from uh, $70,000 to uh, $100 $110,000 mm-hmm. that is like a very good starting salary for a fresh graduate yeah um also for uh, a very smart person who is like going to amazon google and all those places mm-hmm. again luck factor is a big luck one there luck and location i it's mean it's a very right. big factor there you can earn somewhere around 200000 which is, includes space salary plus their stocks and all yeah, those things yeah i assume yeah exactly yeah. and also as you said like it depends on location yeah. if you are in a bay area which is very expensive place to stay and work at you get a lot a, like big salary but if you are in a remote place in texas you expect no more than 70000 because yeah. you don't spend that much on exactly. it exactly yeah exactly i mean the houses in bay area is like 1 million dollar for a house that's minimum like yeah. the worst house ever and in texas you can get a house for 200000 dollars like a big mansion with a yeah, uh, sure. pool and everything yeah exactly which is crazy yeah so yeah coming back to the same point right hmm. the location so if someone in india is earning let's say between anywhere between 10 to 20 lakhs mm-hmm. my assumption is that at let's say if you're in la or sf okay let's stick to la if you're earning around 100 110k you'll have the hmm. same standard of living because a lot of things can compensate like if you're earning 10 to 20 lakhs you can get your own place you can have a maid exactly. you can get a good car yeah um whereas if you're in LA you won't have those amenities but your general for, standard for, forget about the maid <laughs> forget about the those maid those are more millionaires yeah <laughs> but general standard of living like yeah. you, okay you can have your own room you can have a good car and exactly. like basic good stuff that you yeah. would expect at this age you can get yeah i mean the, the purchase parity uh, is is very different in india and here in the united states exactly. your biggest expenses are your rent uh, and uh, your cost of living i mean which is which is the biggest uh, difference otherwise yeah. everything is almost the same if you are earning 20 lakhs in india and you are earning yeah. here i think one difference that i see is the savings you can save a lot here in the united states compared to you can save in india if you are working at a different location for example i think i have heard yeah yeah i have heard of those in india then you have uh, your other expenses and you don't get much time to save yeah so it's fine yeah. like yeah it did definitely that so the big question is what about all those fancy cars <laughs> that i see on instagram of all these new grads who just graduated right like all these audis and bmw and mercedes yeah you're, you're forgetting the best car ever cadillacs yeah <laughs> for some rich people cadillacs <laughs> but tell them yeah. the actual reality of buying cars in the us uh so i will tell you my story first uh i had, i had, i never asked my parents for a car or any vehicles before mm-hmm. and my my car was my first car ever and i wanted to be landmark in my life yeah. so i waited uh, i waited for like two or three years before buying my cadillac cts it's like very good car i would say yeah. uh check it out if you want to search online uh but yeah i mean uh when you see people here buying bmws or mercedes yeah. um it's not like it's very expensive it's yeah. very uh, uh it's very easy to get those cars here yeah, because exactly. we have a we have a huge pre-owned market yeah there's so many options you can lease a car like you yeah. lease a house you can 
buy a certified pre-owned there are then you can rent a car for you a month you can rent a car for yeah. a month like there's so many options yeah it's not the same as buying a mercedes in india exactly right? i can just like go out right now and like get a, a lamborghini for 200 dollars for an hour and it's have quite possible it. and quite then you possible. put a picture on instagram and it's like yeah living exactly best life i mean even if you if you buy it there are so many options the loan rates are much cheaper here yeah 2 3% right exactly yeah. and i think you can get like a bmw for 18 lakhs easy i mean uh, and that's not a big amount of money when you're actually earning here in that state yeah so i mean uh, buying a bmw mercedes it's, it's it's like really easy and uh, don't judge people by the cars they are <laughs> exactly. owning here i mean um, exactly oh uh, yeah but just this guy he just got a new car it's a really nice civic <laughs> It's a Civic XT. So the it's reason a, yeah. I bought the Civic XT was like I was thinking of buying a Mercedes or a BMW, like a lot of people. Uh-huh. But then, if you guys have seen How I Met Your Mother, right? There's this graph, hot crazy graph. Yeah. The hotter the girlfriend is, <laughs> the crazier she is. So yeah. BMW Mercedes requires so much money in terms of maintenance and upkeep. Right. And Honda Civic XT is a very sporty looking car. Yeah. So it's like that girlfriend which is right in the center Optimist. hot enough to get the job done and not crazy enough on maintenance so that's like a good perfect girlfriend for me oh, this guy is a data scientist right <laughs> so you can understand like he optimizes all the data points <laughs> how to get like learn from how to get like a bank account how to get a, a credit card how to get a uh, just make videos bro I'll I'll make videos for some day some day yeah. all right before uh, we let ashu go there are two things we need to do a we have to play our last tt match ever oh of course yeah and hopefully we'll play some more but i'm not sure if it would be at the same company <laughs> and the second aspect is ashu also makes videos on youtube and he makes a lot of interesting and insightful videos like that's how we actually bonded over because when mm. i came here i realized he has a youtube channel and yeah. so please take it yeah so i mean i'm i'm also a filmmaker as a hobby and also make some videos for for helping people who are trying to come here in the united states for their uh, masters or a bachelor's so i have a channel called astrology uh, it's a my name ashu and then logy because it's a science of what i'm teaching so i'm just an narcissist person i think a lot of myself so yeah go to astrology the link would be in the description and uh, uh, if you are come if you're planning to come here to study here in united states uh, you can see what you need what you uh, what you have to learn about uh the exams you have to give how to get scholarships and all those kind of things which you have questions about and also some good short films some good uh web series uh and some travel vlogs so i mean i just do everything uh, which ever i feel like and it's not uh something that a lot lot of people are interested in but yeah go check it out if you like it all right so this was a two part video this was part 2 to check out part 1 check out his channel i will link his channel in the description and also hopefully somewhere in the teaser cards above Let's yeah. play TT. Let's play TT.